Welcome and thank you for joining us today for the meeting of the New York City Health and Hospital Capital Committee. Today's meeting is officially called for order. I would like to first propose a motion to adopt the minutes of the Capital Committee meeting held on April 12, 2021. Let me ask each individual member for the vote. Jose Pagan? Yes. Uh, Dr. Katz? Yes. Uh, Frida Wang? Yes. Sally Hernandez Pinero? Yes. The motion carry. Thank you. Next, we will have the senior vice president report, Ms. Flaherty. Good afternoon, Chairman Pagan, Ch uh, Capital Chair Pinamara, and our committee. Our OFD department has a robust set of activities underway to support our systems facilities. As the COVID-19 numbers cases decrease, our facility management teams are supporting restoration of all of our surge units. Across our system, there are hundreds of ongoing capital projects, and we're working hard to support our facilities to keep these projects moving through the design, procurement, construction, and closeout process. Our new bond-funded portfolio, which is less than 5% of our capital uh, portfolio, is in full swing, and our new design consultants are fully engaged. As of April 23rd, we have one project already in construction, five projects completed design, and in construction procurement, 19 projects in design and 12 projects going through the design selection process. Additionally, we received new capital funding from OMB this April executive plan, and we're working with our facilities to ensure prioritization of the capital work that addresses energy savings and decarbonization, life safety and regulatory compliance, clinical, critical clinical business planning initiatives, and ensures equity of care environments across all of our boroughs. In the coming months, we anticipate issuing our RFP for on-call master planning and assessment services to support the capital and space planning process in it to aid us in identifying opportunities to further streamline our real estate portfolio to enable housing and health, housing is health initiatives to help facilitating how, facilitate housing for our most vulnerable high-risk homeless patients. I look forward to arranging a more robust educational session on the capital planning and implementation process and the actions we are taking to evolve this process to provide industry standard tools needed to drive transparency and efficiency for our capital projects. At this time, I'm happy to take any questions prior to presenting our three real estate and one facility management resolutions today. Uh, thank you, Ms. Plarty. I just want to go thank around. Uh, Jose, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Rita? Sorry, uh, no, no questions, but thank you, Christine, for the report and all the, all the great work and look forward to the uh, educational session. Thank and you. And the environmental, on the, all the environmental work and, and last year, I mean, last month was great. Thank you. Ali? No questions. Dr. Katz? No questions. Okay, thank you. Um, now we have uh, several resolutions to consider. Uh, so, Ms. Flaherty, would you like to uh, introduce those resolutions, please? Yes, the first resolution is authorizing the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, the system, to sign a six month le lease extension with Cheyenne Realty LLC, the landlord, for the use of approximately 1,600 square feet of space at 4302 Church Avenue, Borough of Brooklyn to operate a supplemental food program for women, infant, and children, the WIC program managed by New York City Health and Hospitals, Kings County Hospital Center, the facility at a base rate of $61,437.24 per year, or $38.40 per square foot for a total of $30,718.62 for the six month extension, provided the system will hold an option to extend for an additional five years with the rent for six months extension and five-year option totaling $356,894.90. I'm joined today with uh, Mr. Sheldon McLeod and Vincent Vigil from Kings County Hospital, and we'll go ahead and start the presentation. Good afternoon, board uh, members. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Great, thank you. So New York City Health and Hospitals, Kings County, has operated a WIT program at this location since 2010. The program occupies 1,600 square feet on the ground floor of the building. Pregnant, breastfeeding, postpartum women, infants and children less than five years of age 
who are determined to be nutritionally at risk are eligible for WIC program services, which include monitoring the children's growth rates, nutritional educational and breastfeeding support, and high-risk counseling. Kings also has op Kings also operates two other sites, one on Mill Street Avenue and one on the campus of the hospital itself. Uh, Mr. Peggy we have taken taken note of your issue with the signage there, the awning. We will be addressing that to change it. This resolution. Next yes, next slide. This resolution uh, request is a six month extension, a base rent at $38.40 per square foot or a 2% increase above the current rent. A six month term will commence July 1, 2021 and end December 31st, 2021. H&H &H will hold a five year renewal option. The option will commence January of 2022. Total square foot occupancy cost is within the fair market range of $32 to $40 per square foot. In New York State Department of Health, grant providing full funding will, for all WIC programs is expected to be approved uh, by the start of this, I'm sorry, coming calendar year. The current funding is September of 2021 with future grant funding expect expected. The WIC program to anticipates to receive a new five-year grant. However, however, should the grant program not receive a new grant, New York State Department of Health will continue to fund the program for an additional three months through December 31st, 2021. Uh, next slide. You see the rent schedule there as laid out uh, by Ms. Flaherty and myself. And lastly, next slide, is a map showing that the site as it's proximate proximity to the hospital. It's less than a mile, point eight of a mile away from the facility. Next slide. Uh, so resolved that the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, the system be and hereby is authorized to sign a six year, six month lease extension with China Realty LLC at a base rate of $61,437.24 per year or $38.40 per square foot for a total of $30,718.60 for a six month extension term, provided the system will hold an option to renew the lease for an additional five years. Thank you. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I would like to open it up for questions to the board members. Um, Jose, any questions? No questions. Thank you so much, Sheldon. Thank you. Dr. Katz? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Frida? I think you're muted, Frida. Sorry. Um, I, I think it's great that we could do this uh, six months and then, you know, roll into the five year because of the timing of the DOH and H grant. So that's good. Um, the, the landlord was willing to do that. Um, but one thing I did want to uh, mention, not so much with this, um, this lease, Christine, is something we talked about, I think, in 2019, probably, and of course, I totally understand the focus has been elsewhere, but um, was sort of a cataloging of all the, the leases that we have just um, to better understand kind of, you know, terms and structures and, you know, some we pay real estate tax on, some we don't and that kind of thing. And so um, I thought, you know, they're just to get a better understanding of that, I wanted to Put that back in the queue for things to to look at absolutely so yes we have been uh our avp of real estate and housing leora has been doing a, a deep dive cataloging with our director diane and we'd be more than happy to sit down with you and kind of walk through uh our current state and our current understanding of all of the agreements in place for license agreements and leases Great, and and I think actually, because I know we have some up that are coming up where we're actually the lessor too. But so doing both of those, I think, would be um, helpful for us to understand the portfolio. I think. Absolutely. Yes. There's many okay. different types of relationships. Yes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sally. No questions. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you. Uh, again, Sheldon, thank you for taking note uh, about the um, kind of the front of the facility. Uh, I, as I mentioned before, I think this is an opportunity as we are 
reviewing these leases to really think how we can ensure that the place is welcoming, um, is respectful, and at the same time, it kind of connects to the overall message that health and hospital is your community uh, health center. Um, and, and as you can see in this, if we can go back to that photograph of the uh, storefront, um, you know, go back. Uh, you notice that it's, it's very difficult to see the connection with okay. health and hospital. Um, and I think that that's something that maybe, Christine, you can think of as you're preparing this uh, list for Frida, that for these different um, locations, if there are opportunity at the lowest cost possible to ensure that they are uh, welcoming and again aligned with the uh, messaging of health and hospital that we are your local um, kind of uh, community health center. So thank you, Sheldon, for taking that into consideration. And thank you for all the hard work that you all do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I will take uh, a vote uh, for everybody. Uh, Jose? Yes. Uh, Dr. Katz? Yes. Frida? Yes. Uh, Sally? Yes. Penioski yes. also yes. Thank you. The resolution has passed. Now we go to the Thanks. second one. Thank you. The next resolution is a request authorizing New York City Health and Hospitals, the corporation, the system to execute five successive one-year revocable license agreements with New York City Department of Housing, Preservation and Development, HPD, for the system's continued use and occupancy of block 7061, lot 16, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45 in the Coney Island area of Brooklyn for the operation of the Ida G. Israel Community Health Center, the center managed by the New York City Health and Hospitals Coney Island Hospital Center, the facility at no occupancy fee payable. I'm joined this morning by our CEO, Svetlana, uh, Lipia Skansky, Skaya? I don't see Slitlana, but she's there. And uh, we'll go straight to the one slide for background in this new agreement. Good afternoon, board members. Uh, just a little bit of background. Coney Island Hospital has operated the Ida G. Israel Community Health Center at 2201, 2202 Neptune Avenue prior to Hurricane Sandy. During the hurricane, uh, that location was damaged uh, past the point of being able to continue to use it. Uh, and in July of 2014, the board of directors authorized a license agreement <clears throat> with NYC HPD for the use of uh, block 7061, lot 1639, 40, 42, 43, 44, and 45 uh, to locate a FEMA funded prefabricated structure. Uh, in September of 2017, the board of directors authorize an additional three years of occupancy for the location. Um, we have been uh, covering the cost of this location beginning in 2015 with annual payments of $130,000. This new license agreement um, is a proposal for five successive one year terms uh, with no occupancy fee charged by H HPD. So this is actually a savings to the system of $130,000 a year. Um, in terms of services provided at this location, uh, it, we offer family medicine and primary care to about 4,500 patients a year, uh, a comprehensive dental service to about 10,000 patients, uh, and uh, an active chemical dependency uh, practice uh, serving 14,500 patients per year. Uh, this is an active site for us, and it is in um, an area that is uh, that that is underprivileged, and um, so we would like to continue uh, practicing there. Uh, next slide, please. So we're here today uh, <coughs> seeking um, uh, approval for to authorizing the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation to execute five successive one year revocable license agreements with New York City Department of Housing Preservation and Development for the system's continued use and occupancy of Block 7, uh, 7061, uh, lot 1639, 40, 41, 42, 43, 
44 and 45 in the Coney Island area of Brooklyn for the operation of the Ida G Israel Community Health Center um, managed by Coney Island Hospital at no occupancy fee payable. Questions? Thank you, Slavana. Uh, let me open up the floor for questions. Um, Jose, please. No questions, thank you. Dr. Katz? No questions. Thank you. Frida? I think Frida may have disconnected. Uh, Sally? I love this little center. It's, it's amazing what it's able to do in terms of the dental visits, and uh, chemical dependency visits. I'm curious, I have a couple of questions. Uh, what, do you know what the square footage of the facility is, Svetlana? It's about 5,000 square feet. I don't know the exact number, but it's in that range. Okay, and I, my only concern, because um, it's an assemblage of lots that you've constructed on, is I don't know what the total square footage is of the assemblage, but you know that HPD might decide they want to do development there. Is there an understanding that they won't do it at least for the period of this contract? That's my only worry. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I can answer. I can answer. You have to move up. So I'm going to have Leora Jonta talk a little bit about the plans uh, HPD has in their pipeline at this location, Sally? Okay. I, I don't think that it, the, the way the agreement is structured is one year term. So um, it will be annually, you know, we can renew. I don't think they have any, as far as I know, in the next at least two years, they don't have a plan for this site, but it's hard to know what the future holds. So I don't think there's anything immediate. So there's no risk in the in the short term. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me see Frida. I think she, she may be disconnected. Um, uh, uh, first of all, Slavana, uh, uh, Leora, and Christine, I just want to thank you for your efforts. Uh, something that is quite an accomplishment is that we were paying $130,000 per year to HPD, and now this is a no occupancy fee. So I know that this is due to the great work that you all did, and particularly Leora, uh, as she knows very well HPD. So we want to thank you so much for, because I, I believe those resources will definitely will be of great use to Slavana as she is thinking of supporting her community in the surrounding area through the services that she provides in the hospital. So uh, thank you so much. And I think we can see here is a, is a facility that looks uh, really um, uh, well. And, and, and I believe that the community will continue to take advantage of this and the benefits that this can provide. So th thank you so much. I don't have any question, but just praises to you for the great work and also for saving some money uh, that's uh, you know over five years more than six hundred thousand dollars that's no pocket change so thank you so much thank you and i do want to thank uh publicly our partners hpd who helped allow this to happen they've been tremendous partners for us as we've worked with them closely uh the past 18 to 20 months so uh a big thanks to them as well I will agree, we have to thank. And it shows the collaboration across the city agencies and the partnership. And I think this is wonderful to see in such a, 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 an important facility. Yes, HPD, thank you so much for the, your support. Um, with that, I would like to open up for vote or asking the vote of each one of the members, Jose. Yes. Uh, Dr. Katz. Yes. Frida. I think she's still disconnected. Um, Sally? Yes. Uh, I voted yes. Kalisha, are we okay without Frida's vote? Yes, we are. Okay, she thank you. She is on the line. I think she's having technical issues. She's just not responding. Yeah, I think that's okay. what is happening. Yeah, I think that's what is happening. So I uh, think we can catch, catch up with her after this, but at least uh, this resolution uh, passed. So thank you, um, Christine, the next resolution. And thank you, Slavana, for the presentation.
Thank you. The next resolution is a request authorizing New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, the system to execute a three month revocable license agreement with T-Mobile Northeast LLC, the licensee to operate a mobile cellular communication system on approximately 1600 square foot parcel of land located on the campus of the former Neponset Health Care Center, the facility located at 67 Rockaway Beach Boulevard, Queens, at an occupancy fee of $50,000 or $125 per square foot. So uh, just quickly, this uh, similar license agreement was presented to the board last year. Um, we have our vacant Neponset Healthcare Center, which is located in the far western part of the Rockaways. And in May of 2019, the board had authorized a similar three-month license agreement for T-Mobile for the installation of this mobile cellular communication system, really to enhance cellular communications in preparation for the beach season. Um, under this agreement, uh, the same type of equipment would be installed as last year and operated at this site. And it, this equipment would be in place from Memorial Day to Labor Day, just to allow uh, better communication for I guess T-Mobile customers or maybe others, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the occupancy fee here that we would be able to collect is $50,000. And uh, just for context, um, as previously briefed to the board via uh, email communication, h, h is planning to demolish these structures. Uh, and we actually just received uh, three, three bids from design firms for the demolition of this campus and these structures that are here today. We are working closely with the parks, parks Department on potential site disposition. And uh, this site also is a site that the Parks Department utilizes in the summer. Their lifeguard, uh, their lifeguards stop in here for registration for the day. So they actually have a license agreement in place with h, &H right now that allows them to utilize this side, this property uh, for their lifeguards, uh, for their temporary labor during the summer months. Uh, happy to take any questions, should you have any questions regarding this. Uh, thank you, Christine. Let me go over uh, to each one of the members. Jose, any questions? Uh, no questions, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Katz? No questions. Uh, Frida, are you back on? Uh, no? no um, oh, yeah. no questions. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Frida. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sally? No questions, thank you. Okay. Uh, Christine, uh, uh, thank you for, for this and thank you also for sharing the news about the demolition of this site and, and the idea of working with the Department of Parks. I think this is good, definitely is going to be a great addition to the community and also it will kind of remove uh, from our books uh, a facility that we definitely have to invest to uh, upkeep. Um, I just have a question. As your designers are looking at the demolition uh, plans, um, uh, how are they considering sustainability and, um, in terms of the uh, materials reuse or anything in terms of, of course, I, I would say environmental air quality does a given, but in terms of sustainability, I know that your office has been very much looking into um, enhance um, our efforts to uh, be as sustainable, responsible as possible, but I don't know how this will be included in the design of this particular demolition. So a, a few things, um, we're, we're definitely ensuring that all of the appropriate environmental assessments are done at the early onset. That'll be the first exercises our designers will embark upon. And then we are, uh, obviously looking to reduce any landfill and have as much recycling integrated into um, the you know taking down of these buildings and so i think that uh, the construction industry is an interesting one where uh, now there are opportunities where other organizations are looking for um, certain types of items coming from uh, demolitions and so I'm hopeful that we can really reduce the amount that this impacts a landfill and really recycle as much as we can. Um, in addition to obviously all of the appropriate abatement and air quality controls and all of the other elements that go along with uh, full decommissioning and dismantling of a property. So um, 
I personally love the demolition phase uh, for some reason. I think it's fun <laughs> and uh, we'll be we'll be excited to see kind of what our designers and, and eventually our contractor comes up with. I found that uh, the contracting community also can come up with some creative out of the box ways uh, that sometimes we can't always see. So so this will be a very um, a very interesting and, and more complex than we realize project, but uh, we're really excited to embark upon it. Thank you, Christine. I, I would love to hear when the designers come up with a plan, how they are planning to, again, that you're saying recycling, reuse, particularly that particular green roof, is that a copper roof? Is that correct? Or Yes, that's a metal roof. A metal yes. roof. Uh, and do they have any um, items of historical significance or art significance in any of the uh, facilities or we don't know? Uh, none of these are landmarked uh, no. structures. Um, there's some interesting history of the structures and, and we've captured, you know, there'll be a complete cataloging okay. of that. Um, you know, this site has been uh, completely shut off from utilities for some time. I visited it around Halloween last year. I'm trying to remember at this point, um, but it was interesting. It, one of the wings we went into, uh, there's actually a chalkboard up with with actual chalk writing, um, which you know I think we'll take we'll definitely catalog some of these moments and times. Um, but but yes, this is not historically designated or anything of that nature. But I would say that maybe talking to the Department of Parks, there are way to when they are doing whatever they are going to do to at least keep a little bit of the history because I believe I really don't know all the history about this hospital um, uh, and the healthcare center, but I believe that for some of the community members, it has some uh, significance that may be good to capture. So that's maybe something that you can talk to parks and there are ways in one of the corners, in one of the areas to at least document the history a little bit to keep it for prosperity because uh, I believe that this, this building has had significance to the communities in one way or another. Absolutely. Once the design is underway and we have a better sense of the plans, we do plan on engaging with the community. We've already spoken to uh, Council Member Ulrich's office with uh, my partner, Deb Brown. And so we absolutely plan on having community engagement through the committees to hear their feedback and, and see what elements could be sentimental uh, so that we're very sensitive to that as we go through the process. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And so now I'm going to go through the vote. Um, Jose? Yes. Uh, Dr. Katz? Yes. Uh, Frida? Yes. Uh, Sally? Yes. Thank you. Kanyowski? Yes. So it's, uh, it's approved. Thank you. So we have another um, resolution, Christine? Yes, last last one. Uh, this resolution is a request authorizing New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, the system, to execute a one-year extension of its agreement with CBRE, Inc., CBRE, for various facility management support services for an amount not to exceed $17,750,000. Um, I'm joined today by our AVP of Facilities Management, Manny Saez, and I'll do a little bit of the background and then hand it over to Manny. Um, so in 2012, uh, Health and Hospitals and JCI made a nine-year agreement to manage the system's plant maintenance operations at a total cost of more than $362 million. This involved uh, having 42 to 50 JCI staff support the work consisting of management, finance, and procurement. And at the time of this contract, a MWBE waiver was granted to JCI. Uh, JCI sold their business, uh, this account, to CBRE as a facility management business in 2016. And in 2016, H&H renegotiated with CBRE a significantly reduced scope of work, bringing many of the services back in-house with health and hospitals. The board was informed of that renegotiation for a smaller contract, and the new agreement stayed within the initial term of the agreement with a much more reduced cost and scope. This reduced uh, contract is set, was set to expire on March 15th, 
And at the height of the pandemic, as it was winding down, we had entered into a three month extension to allow us time to establish an MWBE plan with CBRE for a proposed short term bridge best interest renewal. And now this agreement is set to expire in June 15th of 2021. The annual expenditure is 17.75 for urgent supplies, repairs, and facility support. 1.75 million uh, consists of the staffing, and 16 million is goods and urgent repairs. Uh, our plan is to competitively procure or insource this scope of services. And in order to procure it, we need additional time to appropriately assess as well as perform the actual procurement to have these services in a longer term contract. So this is a short term best interest renewal that we are requesting here today. Um, next, I'm gonna have us go through the CBRE scope of services and I'll have Manny Sai as our AVP of facilities management cover that. Manny. Hi, good afternoon board members. Um, currently in this slide, and I'll be taking you to the rest of the slides, the CBRE scope of services currently includes supplemental staff which support urgent and ongoing physical space needs. Uh, payment CBRE is pre-funded, which allows immediate just-in-time payment when required in order to mobilize vendors for ur urgent work. Uh, urgent purchases, 24-hour turnaround on POs to support urgent facility-based requests for physical plant needs. Repairs of our system and infrastructure, parts and supplies to repair and replace systems and infrastructure. Uh, regulatory urgent assessments of unanticipated facility, life safety, and regulatory concerns. Joint Commission related urgent supply slash repairs required during regulatory review of environmental care. Uh, currently, our directors of CBRE that house a couple of our facilities are everyday operations, uh, which include regulatory environment of care compliance, oversight of in-house trades, responsible for preventative maintenance program, responsible for facilities-based documentation, responsible for ongoing facility operations in the day-to-day, expert troubleshooting of complex infrastructure issues and support joint commission and regulatory compliance. The next slide is the continued current state. So last year, OFD began working closely with supply chain uh, to, determine, to determine if insourcing or uh, RFPing to ensure continuity, uh, continuity, uh, I'm sorry, of facility operations. The work was paused during the COVID as many things were. The majority of our procurements performed by CBRE are a smaller dollar amount of less than 6,000 uh, in average. CBRE leverages their nationwide global networks to procure urgent supplies. Uh, this is essential during COVID. We had situations in COVID where we required specific supplies that uh, CBRE urgently uh, got us to procure. Facilities management has overseen and diligently reviewed the annual OTPS budget. And uh, these urgent purchases were approved and within annual budget sets by finance. Uh, I manage that budget along with our team, and we've always been in line uh, with the budgets that we set forth for CBRE. Uh, cumulative, uh, cumulative MWBE spend in the last two and a half years has been 5.23%. As Christine mentioned earlier, there was a waiver for them. Uh, I'll be happy to say that there's improved work, which I'll show in future slides. OFD and supply chain has been working with CBRE to increase the MWBE participation by replacing vendors with MWBE firms. CBRE provides dedicated on-site procurement and staff, finance staff, to source emergency facility items, uh, and it's all in compliance with 100-5. On the right-hand side of this slide, you'll see our current breakout of FTEs. As per the agreement, operations leaders, the financial analysis, supply chain resource specialists, purchasing agents, the directors of engineering, and an elevator starter that we have at Bellevue. So here's our vendor performance evaluation. Across the board, it was excellent. Our entire operational team responded. Uh, CBRE has been a critical part of our business line uh, and they have performed in a very satisfactory way for us in this case, uh, evaluating as excellent. And our procurement services, these two tables show the, uh, the above table is the purchases of POs, um, fiscal years listed on the left. The number of POs centered in the middle, and then the average value of these POs. Um, and in the bottom chart shows us the historical spend between HHC and JCI CBRE. Uh, you'll see that as we work through uh, their outsourcing and our insourcing that we've been able to work a lot more with less. Uh, we've been able to efficiently work our service contracts to be all inclusive. Uh, we've been able to operate uh, with a lot more efficiency in terms of netting in our square footage. Just recently, the additions of the Centers of Excellence for Gotham, 
uh, we've been operationally sound since we've been sourced this piece of business. Uh, the bridge contract renewal justification, um, any best interest renewal under the system's procurement operating procedures, OP 100-5 is where the system determines that it is in the best interest to renew a contract rather than to re-procure it. This is permissible under 100-5. The cost benefit analysis to support the bridge short-term renewal below shows um, that there would be a significant negative value in terms of dollars and services were we to switch to another vendor today. Um, and in the two columns, you can see the benefits of the bridge renewal currently and the additional cost of switching immediately. Competitive rates on the benefit side of staff augmentation services, we would pay higher rates for DR, uh, DOEs and procurement teams. If we went out currently, a low markup of 7%. Uh, if we went out, we would be looking at 10 or 15% in that increased cost. All vendors are loaded into the CBRE procurement system. There would be an initial setup and new procurement system um, alignment costs where you're trying to kind of get a startup going. Uh, seamless continuity of critical service, uh, critical needed services. And then on the other side would be a risk to interruption of our operational, uh, operational needs on a daily basis. Here is the current CBRE spend um, in terms of the MWBE. Um, you'll see the first quarter, uh, we were barely averaging 365, 4.6, 385. Uh, once we got into the renewal, the extension, we were able to bump that uh, threshold up to 15%. I'm proud to say that for the month of April, and CBRE has been helping us track this, uh, for the month of April, we were well up above 38%, uh, close to 40 actually. Um, and in this May, we're working and, you know, to obviously exceed 15%. Uh, but when we get, if, if, if the resolution is passed, we'd like to be able to uh, commit to that 30% uh, for the year of their extension to meet all of the MWBE needs and obligations. So here are the current categories. CBRE committed to a 30% utilization plan for a 12 month extension uh, from July 21 through June 22. CBRE analyzed FY20 and 21 spend at 23.5 million to identify MWBE spend opportunities. And as you see here, we'll have the categories of MWBE, the percentage of the spend and its total. So. In the first category there, you'll see suppliers with diverse uh, spend with diverse suppliers that are uh, pending verification of 11 cer of certification. We put about 10% of the spend to the tune of 2.392 million. Relocation to diverse uh, suppliers has been about 16%. That's been to the tune of 3.579 million. And then there's an increased opportunity to continue to work with MWBE uh, firms and push another 4% uh, in that direction. Um, what's, what's interesting here is that MWBE, while, while we know that CBRE is obligated to onboard them, we also have a discipline that we have to hold on our end to use them. So we've been working closely with our DOEs and our requisitioners to know that these opportunities exist in MWBE. One of the efforts that we're doing is that we'll be showcasing vendors uh, to come in and meet of all, all of our teams so that um, we can exchange information and make sure that our team has a good understanding of services and repairs. And then finally, um, CBRE was able to put into their system a way for us to balance and check when requisitions are coming in. So if a particular facility puts in for a service need and it goes through the CBRE system, the CBRE system will flag that there's a potential opportunity to use an MWBE firm. This has been very useful for us uh, in those circumstances where we can uh, divert that spend to an NWBE vendor. Here is a list of CBRE current MWBE suppliers. Uh, on the bottom category, you see vending pending. Uh, these are M new MWBs, sorry. Okay, so current MWBE suppliers, vendor pending certifications on the bottom there. And then in our next slide, you'll see identified new MWB vendors. Best interest renewal request. Um, this is to extend contract for one year for an additional 1.75 million in professional services and 16 million in urgent supply slash repairs. It is in the system's best interest to renew this agreement to ensure continuity facility operations and ensure timely delivery of goods and certain urgent supplies. CBRE leverages their scale to ensure that pricing of their purchased items are market competitive. 
The plan is next year to either insource this work or to conduct an RFP. So this capital committee request is the Office of OFD is requesting a one-year bridge best interest renewal of CBRE contract for professional services valued at 1.750 million uh, and urgent facility goods and services valued at 16 million for a total not to exceed of 17.750 million and MWB utilization plan of 30%. And I believe that is my final slide. We're happy to take any questions. Thank you, Manny. Thank you, Christine. Let me go over the board members. Uh, Jose, any questions? No questions. Thank you for all the details on the, on the resolution. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Katz? No questions. Thank you. Frida? Um, I, I do have a couple of quick questions, and I just want to say that I, I like what we're, we're doing here and taking a look at, you know, what we can do internally instead of um, outsourcing and I think it's always good to do this. It may end up that contracting is a better route, but um, it's good to be thinking about it. So um, I, I want, I'm just curious uh, what happened to the rest of the JCI work? Um, I know the scope was scaled down a lot for CBRE. So um, the biggest portion of scale had to do with all of the directors of engineering and the assistant directors of engineering, the professional uh facility management professionals per site uh we're mm -hmm. all jci employees and at this point we are we have really reduced the amount of on-site directors of engineering to three um so so a big portion of the focus was facility management uh and so that has been you know, under Manny's leadership and the team's leadership, that has really a lot of this is insourced at this point. However, there remains a really facility focused aspect of urgent purchasing um, mm. and payment that has actually been a critical element of just operational uh, kind of continuity. And so uh, that's the portion of work that we're kind of focused on doing a further analysis to determine um if that is viable as an in-source function there has also been um you know some expert you know i would say troubleshooting that that we've really leveraged with the operations leader uh providing you know real-time expertise as infrastructure failures or close to failures occur and so that as well as uh, uh joint commission uh regulatory uh you know visits those are the two other areas that i would say uh, this contract still remains incredibly valuable for our system. Um, and so those are the, some of the areas of what I would say kind of bridges to things that, um, you know, I think we have insourced a tremendous amount. Uh, I, right. I think the team's done a great job uh, insourcing a, a very large portion of what was previously outsourced. Great. So, I mean, it may be that this is, this is still a good construct to go forward with, um, but sounds like we've been evaluating all of that and, and bringing a lot internally. So I guess on along those lines, um, I think on one of the slides, there was um, a reference to the markup that's kind of standard. If we were to bring it in house, does that mean our markup, like we're at a 7% markup now with CBRE, would, do you expect that that markup, <clears throat> that standard markup would still apply or is it really more just of a difference in the pricing of the costs, because I know you referenced also that CBRE, because of their purchasing power, can can get better pricing for us. So is that, you know, I, I don't know if that's some of the trade-off here in terms of yeah. um, No, you, you pointed in. out the exact area of trade-off of understanding the purchasing uh, power of an organization like this that is focused on uh, ongoing maintenance of of physical space throughout the world and the country. And so they have uh, purchasing power discounts that they uh, have also identified. Um, additionally, their ability to pay in a focused manner and have that reputation is uh, mm -hmm. not the same as a health and hospitals purchase order, at, which is a health care organization. And so the first priority is going to be to pay, you know, for masks and nurses and all of the important things that have to do with healthcare delivery. And so um, I think that that is 
you know, the payment, the timing of a payment um, by vendors is another uh, element of, of cost that has to be looked at uh, as we look at in sourcing or versus looking at um, continuing similar services through an RFP. I just uh, right. add to what uh, Christine said, because it relates to a question Sally also asked at a previous session. The big difference, we don't hold invoices. Mm -hmm. However, it's also true that the city processing, because it's city money, will always have many more checks against embezzlement, you know, sending money than a regular, you know, entity would have. And so just the, the, the sheer processing time of invoices for us, and really any government entity will always be longer than a non-government entity, even if invoices are not held because of cash flow. That makes sense. And, and adds to, as Christine pointed, the purchasing power, you know, sort of right, a daisy exactly. chain. Exactly. Right, exactly. Okay, uh, thank you. That, those were my questions. Thank you, Frida. Uh, uh, Sally? I think this is a fascinating little contract. Um, not so little. <laughs> um, you know, back in 2012, the thought was to create this for the nine year agreement, 362 million, you know, kind of a sizable uh, entree into this kind of off outsourcing of a very, very narrow bands of obligations for facilities. And then in 2016, um, when they sold the contract, I guess H&H &H kind of rethought its original reason for creating the contract and did some downsizing. Um, my, I, when I worked in government, <laughs> I tried to outsource lots of things um, for just what Mitch said. Um, it's impossible for government to pivot as quickly on things like payment and processing of uh, orders. And when you look at the thousands and thousands of purchase orders that they process, um, you know, uh, often in government, you know, a $5,000 a uh, PO will get as much attention and require as much time as a $50,000 purchase order. So um, I just think it's worth giving serious thought to. They, they have an excellent rating. They've worked really well. I would imagine facilities um, like uh, the speed and efficiency of the operation. Um, so I think it's, it's worth seriously considering, um, you know, the trade-offs, as you've already said, Manny and Christine, that you will be doing. That's it. Uh, thank you, Sally. Um, I, I just have a, 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 a praise to Manny and Christine. Uh, uh, you know, if you can see from where we were in terms of the diversity of the vendors um, in, in the contract, uh, we were really in very low, uh, I think, believe 5%, below 5%, and now you already have reached the 20% on your way to 30%. Um, it just showcases um, that, uh, you know, when you are asking the question, working with the vendors, you're being intentional about your approach and implementing the goals and, and ensuring that our values are upheld, um, it really works uh, because everybody want to do the best they can and we just have to ensure that we do the proper follow up and be as creative as possible. So I just want to uh, again thank you Manny uh, for, for your work on this and I echo some of the comments that uh, my colleagues have said. Uh, um, it's also very good how you have been looking at this contract as, as, as well as other to ensure that we are getting the best value of all of them. If that is that we need to continue contracting, that'll be it, but it will be a very methodologic, methodological and, and, and intentional approach, uh, or if we wanna do it in-house as well. So uh, thank you for, for your great work. 
and I don't have any question, any other questions. So with that, I would like to ask for each one of the board members yes. for the book. Yes. I just quickly ask a question. Frida asked what you bought in house, and you said I guess there were I don't know forty two or something uh, staff at one point, and um, if you could give me a little better sense of uh, what all those people were doing and how those functions, what functions have you bought in house that they were doing originally? So I'll let Manny uh, describe the amazing work of our directors of engineering and assistant directors of engineering. So what, what, what initially happened when JCI sold the division, the management services division to CBRE, uh, because that's in fact what it was, what we were able to transition in house was our operational leaders, our directors, our associate directors that handled everyday operations for each of our sites, all of our acutes, all of our long-term facilities and our Gotham clinics. On the management services side, when CBRE had their contract, all of those directors and assistant directors were essentially running off of their program. We insourced all of the day-to-day -day operations, including all of our regulatory responsibility, and we've only, we minimized the use of their contract to you see just to their procurement function, and on occasion, some specialty work when it comes to infrastructure or some regulatory services, but our everyday operations, from our directors to our associate directors and the leading of all of our trades and engineers that was bought in house on the leadership level. And so what those uh, individuals are doing, they're overseeing all of our union trades. They're directing the preventative maintenance program, the urgent in-house construction work that needs to happen. Uh, they were really leading the charge uh, during COVID as we had to open up surge areas and you know, we were supplementing them with emergency contractors, but also many of our own trades were on the front lines, really doing a lot of that physical work. So, uh, you know, the the um, the barriers you see at our clinics, the uh, many dialysis uh, bedside dialysis boxes that were put in place, um, a, really a tremendous amount of work was done under the direction of our directors of engineering, work, working in tandem with our facility leadership. Thank you. That really clarifies things for me. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? No? Uh, so I'm going to uh, ask for each one of your vote. Uh, Jose? Yes. Uh, Dr. Katz? Yes. Uh, Frida? Yes. Uh, Sally? Yes. Uh, I also vote yes. Uh, the motion is carried. Thank you, Manny. Thank you, Christine. Is there any other? I believe Thank that's you. all. Thank you. That is all today. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I like the word today. <laughs> 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 you have been very busy, Christine, and your team. So that's always good. Uh, so I just want to check if there is any old business that we need to attend to. Any new business? No, so if there are no further discussion, I would like to uh, adjourn this meeting. Uh, so thank you everybody. It has been a little bit of a marathon morning, uh, a Monday morning <laughs> <laughs> with technical difficulties and all. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much. kept on schedule. Yes, we did. Uh, because our leader, Sally, said the, the, <laughs> the sample. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Be well. Bye. 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 Bye.